No sitting governor can make money on the side. It's a long-standing ethical restriction meant to ensure government integrity. But Trenton horse traders may carve out an exemption for Chris Christie and let him cash in on a book deal in return for giving a raft of hefty raises that you'd pay for. David Cruz reports. Nothing but hot air. For seven years now, Governor Christie has made the legislature his personal foil, touting bipartisanship when it suited his purposes and berating them when convenient. By most accounts, the relationship has benefited the governor much more than lawmakers, and so it was with some surprise this week that many lawmakers greeted news about the governor's book deal deal. This is the thing that the governor chooses to work with the legislature on. You know, uh, I have not participated in any discussions on the development of this bill. I haven't seen it. I only read about it. I made a quip if he's going to write a book, I want the ability to do some footnotes in it. But that was just a joke. So if, if this is as it is, as we know it right now, you're a no vote? I am a no vote. This bill allows the governor or any other state employee to make money off a book. But it also means raises for the governor's cabinet, raising the max salary to $275,000. Judges would see a 6% increase over two years and then annual raises tied to the consumer price index. Finally, it gives lawmakers another $30,000 for staff salaries. This isn't a Republican or Democrat issue, said Senate co-sponsor Kevin O'Toole. This is to ensure we are able to attract and retain the best and brightest to serve the people of New Jersey. As for the book deal provision, this is not a unique provision, he added. It's simply a First Amendment right that has been denied in New Jersey. But on the heels of the last Christie deal with lawmakers, one critic says this one is just too much. I think it's wrong. I think it's absolutely wrong. This is barely a month after 7.1 million people just experienced a gas tax increase of $1.3 billion. So the legislature just acted to raise taxes on the vast majority of our citizens and is now turning around and giving raises to the political elite. Lawmakers point out that this is not a raise for them, it's for their staffs who haven't seen a raise in years. But Beck says public service should never be about money. The public service isn't about earning a big paycheck. If that's why you're entering public service, then you're entering for the wrong reason. Because this is really about serving. This is about serving the residents. It's not about making a lot of money. If you want to make a lot of money, you should stay in the private sector and earn a big paycheck and work 14 hours a day. The Senate president had no comment about the bill or whether it represented a somewhat tone-deaf set of priorities, as critics like the Democratic frontrunner to succeed Christie suggested. I came out pretty harshly, pretty strongly about the book piece, uh, frankly, as I did about the last week, the, the, the office renovation and finding $300 million. We're desperate for money. We're desperate for focused leadership on this state. And, and, and we've pleaded time and time again for the governor to focus on the job that he's been elected to do, which is full-time lead this state. And God knows we need leadership. This is a state in economic crisis. So there are three bills that will be considered in committee tomorrow, the salaries and book deal bill. Another bill that would appoint 20 new judges as part of uh, judicial reform efforts. And a third bill that would end the practice of requiring government to post legal ads in newspapers. Mary Ellen. So, David, what's this about? Well, this last bill, really, they're calling it the, the governor's revenge bill, because even those close to him say that it's his chance to stick it to newspapers for their coverage of not only his administration, but also specifically the, the bridge trial. You're an old newspaper man. What's the real, not that old, <laughs> what's the real impact uh, newspapers are already a vanishing breed. Yeah, um, it depends on who you talk to, but I used to work at a, a small local weekly, and a lot of those small newspapers depend. It, it's really an existential crisis to them because without those legal notices, and these are the things like uh, the zoning board meeting and the building that's going up for sale and so on, those, uh, they live on those things. And if you take them away, small newspapers will uh, very likely die. Uh, and will it save money for taxpayers, which is the contention? Yeah, it depends on who you talk to. Also, the, the government, the governor says it's going to save 80 million, but that's a very kind of unrealistic.